Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Morris Button. I'm the CEO of City and Financial Global. Uh, in today's interview, I will be uh, discussing the future of UK capital markets regulation uh, with James Palmer, who's a partner at Herbert Smith Freehills. Uh, James is speaking at our conference, which is coming up on the 25th of September, on this particular topic, that, that event being held in London. Uh, James, welcome. Thank you, Morris. Great to be here. Good to have you with us. Let, let's turn to the questions. Uh, last month, the Chancellor announced his mansion house reforms to address the decline in UK listings, including reform of the prospectus regime, the investment research review, and a proposed new intermittent trading venue. How successful do you think these will be in attracting companies to list in London? So I am a supporter of the reforms and very positive about them. Uh, I think they are pretty fundamental to uh, attracting businesses to London and, and attracting investments to London. Uh, and uh, therefore, I, uh, I think they will be successful. But I think the key point is I don't think they'll be successful on their own. Uh, and I think the Chancellor and, and the Economic Secretary, Andrew Griffith, um, have recognised this, uh, to, to be fair. And they're not suggesting it fixes everything on its own. Um, I think that a lot of the debate in the city has been about the reform to listing rules and, and research rules and the regulatory regime and so on. And I think it is fundamental because I think we do need to be competitive with other markets. But I think that also includes uh, looking at being competitive with private markets, which um, we may want to come yes. back to, uh, which I think is a, a, a pretty fundamental point. Uh, and I think that we have reached a position where rules have been introduced that uh, are not actually seen by investors over a long-term trajectory or actually by issuers and those who want to raise capital as attractive enough. We've seen a mass exodus to private capital over the recent years, but we've also seen a significant shift. It's not, it's not been all one-way traffic and there are many successes for the London market, but it has been much tougher and there have been disadvantages in the UK. And I think it is absolutely right that some of the burdens in the UK are simply not proportionate to the benefits that they purport to provide investors because we see investors investing far more capital in other markets that don't have those protections. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, essentially, that there are lots of different factors involved in this, that there's no sort of silver bullet to, to the whole thing. But, but another aspect of the overall reform approach uh, is uh, encouraging more investment in UK equities, particularly by UK pension funds. Uh, how do you see this working out in practice? Well, I think this is the even bigger piece of it. And I, I've been sounding off on this for a long time, but um, I'm particularly passionate about this bit, uh, as I think it's the bit there's more work to be done on still. I think that the regulatory reform agenda, the uh, chasing better proportionality of listing regime, more competitiveness, not race to the bottom, by the way, Nobody's interested in that. That will not attract liquidity, but just proportionality and an honest debate, I think, is, is important. But this is the really big bit. And I think that um, what I'm most pleased about in the Mansion House speech is the recognition of the problem. Uh, I, I think that the measures that were announced are positive. You know, the voluntary commitment to, to money going into um, uh, early stage capital investments or illiquid equity investments, the uh, consolidation of, of local authority pensions, and so on. These, 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 these are all positive, but I think that we need to step back and look still further at this. I, I, and I, I, I'm not saying this critically, because I think the recognition of the problem has been a, a, a breakthrough moment for us. Uh, but if you step back, as you said in your comments, Morris, the reality is uh, pension investment in the UK, equity investment in the UK, has gone down dramatically. And it's, it's not actually matched, as you will know, uh, by the approach in other jurisdictions. And that makes us ask ourselves, have we actually created disincentives to invest mm. in the UK? Have we got the wrong incentives? Are we providing incentives where we do provide them through tax and other things for the right behaviors? Yeah. And uh, I, I look at it rather simplistically, which is most people I know, even when they're as old as me, uh, and, uh, you know, actually still are very heavily invested in equities. And if people who are insiders in the city at senior levels are skewed to equity, 
And because of the long-term trajectory of equity return, why do we create a saving system for the whole of the country that drives people away from that? And so I think there's two pieces. There's yeah. one, the underinvestment in equity. I think the other is the driver away from public capital. Uh, again, there, there are multiple facets to this, but, uh, but I, I also think there's a valid debate about why we're incentivizing quite so much investment internationally as opposed to investment in the UK. And I'm not saying that we will only support pension savings in the UK. That would be a foolish approach. But I do yeah. think that uh, we should go back to basics and look at the incentives and why the trajectory has shifted, why we've moved away from equities, why we've moved away from public market, and uh, and why yeah. we've moved more yeah. towards debt. And it's it's a lot to do with tax and regulatory regimes. But I think the fiscal regime yeah. is going to yeah. be important here too. Yeah, and accounting. Uh, regimes, I guess, to an extent, because is that not no. part of the picture with the pension funds? Yeah, it, it, but... it's a major issue, and 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 it's complicated because the the introduction of uh, well, the way in which the structure for divine benefit pension schemes was changed really during the nineties and and two thousands, uh, yeah. combined yeah. with the accounting, which requires uh, the effectively you know, contractual obligation on a, on a company to uh, to look at the future cost of all those forward-looking pension obligations, which wasn't what happened when I started in the mid-80s, uh, absolutely have disincentivized DB schemes. They've disincentivized risk-taking, any form of risk-taking by sponsor companies. And I think, but let, let's just be clear, we're not blaming sponsor companies or pension fund trustees here. What they have done is yeah. rational with the structure and system we've put in place. And that's why yeah, I think yeah, we need to look at structure, structurally and systemically. Yeah, I, I, to, to some extent, do you think, uh, just moving on to, to what you referred to earlier uh, in terms of the public-private debate, do you think that, that this perhaps has encouraged the, this move towards companies uh, going to private equity firms to, to raise funds? Because the, the, is, is there a playing field level between public and private markets? Uh, how, how do you think that might be adjusted? Well, I think it's it's patently not level. It's patently, and I don't think the right answer is to overburden private markets. That will drive capital away from the UK. Uh, you know, interestingly, yeah. the, the US has actually uh, uh, just announced this week some further regulation of private funds, but it's still, you know, pretty light touch, and that's about private fund structures rather than rather than uh, overly burdensome transparency and so on. We need to be very, very careful that the fix is not just burden everybody more because that just creates costs, yeah. maybe yeah. good for lawyers and compliance functions and consultants and accountants, but not really good for underlying economies, uh, savers and, and those who want capital for growth. Uh, so I think that don't just dump it all on private capital. I think that the burden on public capital is completely disproportionate and I think it speaks for itself. I think that the, uh, the, the it's a long time ago, but the loss of ACT on uh, dividends, tax credits for dividends, um, which was got rid of years and years and years ago, but which effectively was a form of tax support for, for equity investment, uh, yes. uh, combined with full deductions for debt, has clearly driven debt funding, uh, but uh, the, the regulatory burden of public capital has absolutely driven explosive growth in private capital. And I think if you step back, I, I think that I think it is great to have strong private capital markets, but, but you do need strong public capital markets. If you think about it, if savers need liquidity, a world in which almost all of savings are in illiquid private structures is not a sensible model. There is an inherent benefit in having structures that facilitate liquidity because of that benefit for, for savers, but even more, you go right back to first principles. Public capital ought to be cheaper than private capital, and that is not the yes. case anymore. And that is, uh, it, it still may be, but that is, that's bonkers. You know, we, we need to address that. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, final question, if I may, just, uh, which, which I hadn't mentioned previously, but what, what about trying to develop a, a more of a retail culture, culture for uh, investment? So that you know, retail investors uh, look at the public markets more, they look at equities more. You know, obviously in the US that, that's deeply ingrained uh, in the way yeah. the system works. 
But here we, we have ISAs, we have SIPs, we have various uh, tax wrapped investment uh, approaches. We have platforms which make such investment easier. But but yes, it doesn't really seem to amount to very much. Do you, do you think that it's just just a different uh, approach in the UK, and, and can that be changed? So I I think it can be changed, and I think it should be changed. I mean I. I think again it's complicated and i don't want to sort of make it sound overly simplistic to fix it but there are a multitude of barriers to investing in straightforward equity or debt uh, for private investors so firstly we the whole system is skewed to intermediation of investment including for those who may not need intermediation and intermediation provides enormous benefits for those who don't have the capabilities or time to manage their money and they need professional help. But actually, we also yeah. force people into intermediation who don't need that. I mean, you look at the fact that the reports that 5 million people have chosen to invest in crypto. I mean, that tells you that people are quite happy to invest directly, uh, in my view, in completely yeah. the wrong, unsuitable uh, way. But it, the, the difficulty of getting financial advice you know, again, this is going to sort of, I don't, I don't think the solutions are in the rear view mirror. I think they're forward. But, you know, when I started my career, anybody could walk in to see a bank manager and get advice. Anybody could get advice from a, a you know, even for relatively small investments or from a stockbroker who would give them advice on specific stocks. You wouldn't have to go to a portfolio advisor who would charge you a fee, who would drive you into a fund of funds, which might then invest into other funds. And we've just created layers of cost and intermediation which in, in many cases do add value and, and the providers of these services I know want to add value. But I think yes. the, the, the challenge with getting sensible advice, we, we worry too much about some investors, some of the time losing some money as a result of which all in, or a, a very large proportion of investors, most of the time are losing the gains and opportunities they ought to have yes. uh, out of kilter. Yeah. So really, that the system needs a bit uh, of recalibration. Uh, Jane, yes. James, thank, thank you very much indeed uh, for sharing those insights with us. Uh, and we look forward to discussing all these topics in much more depth at the summit, the future of UK Capital Markets Regulation Summit, which is being held in London on the 25th of September. So I hope our viewers will be able to join us in person uh, at the event. Uh, and James, many thanks. Thank you, Morris. And looking forward to the conference. Thank you.